Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another part of my Kerbal tutorial playthrough. We are finally going to go interplanetary. We have a contract to visit Duna. And while we could, in theory, get to Duna where it is now, we want to wait for it to be in exactly the right place for what's called a Hovman transfer orbit. That's basically where you perform uh, and you go into an elliptical orbit where you start at your planet and at the furthest point at Apple, uh, Apple Apps, you arrive at the target planet. Now, for the case of Duna, you want it to be about 45 degrees ahead of you here, right? So you've got to imagine a triangle between Duna, the Sun and Kerbin and hope that that's about 45 degrees. If it's not perfectly accurate, don't worry you can get still get a great transfer. So that's what I'm going to use. And now, well, we've spent a lot of time time accelerating, and that means that the scientists have been beavering away for a while. We have 499 science. So we're going to transmit that all back to base here. And of course, we have a whole pile of science from other experiments, which we want to convert into data so that we can then actually transmit it home. This I have actually cut short because it is a very long and tedious, uh, you know, sequence where I'm basically waiting for the game to transmit the science. The science transmission occurs at a fixed rate regardless of your time acceleration. However, the recharging of the batteries using the, the solar panels, that will be affected by time acceleration. So at least there is some advantage to time accelerating. Anyway, with a large amount of science collected, it's time to return to the Space Center and actually pick out the new technologies which will help us on our quest to go to Duna, or at least maximize our science. Now, since we're going to be launching a space probe, it's really time that we get these aerodynamic fairings here. These are the 1.25 meter versions, but they will contain things larger than that. I want the large parachutes and landing gear probably quite useful. Uh, small propulsion system mm -mm, and these radial thrusters. These are quite useful things for space probes. I think I may unlock this, right, so that gives me a little engine and these will give me little radial engines. Those will be extremely useful. Oh, actually, let's let's do a rover. Look, we have these little, uh, we have the external command seat that's very nice, but we have the little wheels for rovers. I'm totally going to send a rover to Duna because you guys are probably wondering what uh, rovers are like and how they're useful and stuff like that. Um, this is for surveying planets. I'm not sure we're ready to do that. We don't have enough science anyway. Uh, avionics, no need for that. R parachutes and stuff. Oh, that's a big heat shield as well. Not going to do that. Advanced aerodynamics. Well, all very cool, but probably not what we're going to do here. Supersonic flight. Uh, I, I don't think we're going getting into space planes in this episode because we will need the turbojets and that will need us another 300 sites. Oh, the grabber! The grabber might be a thing or precision engineering. Those are my two options for 193. I think I'm going to go for the grabber because that will unlock certain types of part recovery contracts. Okay, so now back to base and we're going to build something in the aviation hangar, the space plane hangar, because it, by default, uses mirror symmetry, and that's great for rover building. Now, if you're going to build a rover, best option is this probe double double dine uh, rover mate, which originally was not a space probe, but it is now. It used to be you had to attach a space probe to that body, and people felt that it was like literally a brick of pointlessness. So we're going to take the tiny little wheels. Now that's uh, yeah, just attach those roughly along the middle here. I'm going to do three sets because I think, well, basically there's a chance that they get damaged on descent. So it's always good to have some pair, uh, spare wheels. There are six of those. Now, to make this work, we're going to put some batteries on it. Um, can't, have we got enough clearance? Oh, yes, we can just stick them between these there. Stick a pair of batteries there. And I'll take a copy and stick another pair there. That should keep me... That should keep me, uh, you know, in power for as long as I need it. Photovoltaic cells, we're going to attach these to the top. Now with rovers, rovers drive ar around a lot and the solar panels that fold out have a habit of breaking off eventually if you drive around with them for too long. So 
it's good to just have the ones that are attached on top. Now I'm trying to leave a little space in the middle here because I want to attach something, I want to attach like a parachute on top of it, right? So for that I'll go to structural and we don't have a right, oh we only have a stack separator rather than a stack decoupler. That'll go in there. And probably a good idea to adjust the solar panels so that they don't touch that because that will pop off and potentially break things. There we go. Uh, that's about as close as we can go there. Eight little solar panels will probably be enough to get us through our day. A uh, little bit of clipping there, or a little bit of um, Z fighting, that's what they call it, or Z fighting if you're American. It's where you use the, uh, you're using a Z buffer to figure out which polygon is the closest, and they're both equal, so it depends upon the search order as to which one you actually show. Okay, anyway, uh, I think I'm going to try and make this into a lander, like a bit of a, a landing type spacecraft. The idea being that I've tested this on Duna before. I know that a parachute will not on its own put this thing down safely without breaking the wheels. So I'm going to have like a little RCS thruster pack here. So yeah, we're going to have a large parachute and then some rocket thrusters for deploying this on the surface, right? Now... We should probably put the science instruments on this here, right? Science, and we're gonna attach them, attach them to all sorts of places. Oh yeah, we have these things here, okay. Gonna put the thermometer, we're just gonna put all the reusable experiments on this because it has to drive around. Oh, there we go, a little seismometer. Ooh, the atmospheric fluid spectral variometer. Oh, I haven't used this one yet. That'll be a useful thing. This basically does atmospheric analysis, which is nice because it's one of those things which is biome specific, so you can get a lot of science out of it. I just think I need to move my seismometer to the other si side. This weighs the same as most other science experiments, but clearly it's a whole lot voluminous than we have come to expect. There we go, science, and the pressure, press mat barom barometer. Okay, so those are all reusable experiments. The materials bay and the mystery goo are not reusable. Put the antenna on. We actually have a pretty good rover here. And at this point, I'm going to cut out the, the ship design sequence because I ended up using a completely different approach for landing it, which we will see in a moment. But anyway, once you've built your rover, you can actually take it out on the runway and drive it around for testing and do your atmospheric analysis and everything. I'm just going to keep the data, but I could transmit it home all the way to the Kerbal Space Center. Of course, we can log the temperature, which we already know all about. We can drive it forwards. Now, so the, uh, the wheels work based off the WASD keys again. It's useful if you're doing this with the rover mate because the old spacecraft actually had a problem where the spacecraft torque would sometimes cause the whole thing to roll uncontrollably. The rover mate actually doesn't have any inter internal torque, which may be considered a disadvantage in some situations, but it seems to actually work pretty well in this one. Anyway, moving on. Now, in the vehicle assembly building, I can load the rover by clicking on SPH, which will let me load things from the space plane hangar. Now, it'll appear down the bottom, there we go, and as soon as I pick it up, it rotates, but just make sure you rotate it back to the correct orientation. Now, I want to put this on the surface as part of a larger spacecraft, which will do science from a static base. I'm just going to try and attach a stack separator there. Use the offset tool to give it a bit of movement as far away as possible. We don't want these things colliding. And then I think I think I might need to check that antenna. It's rather, yeah, the antenna should be a little lower down so that it doesn't collide with whatever I attach that uh, stack separator to. Oh, no, grab that. Move yourself downwards. It doesn't matter where you are, you'll just work. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna stick the whole thing inside this service bay. Isn't this beautiful? It contains this rover perfectly. Uh, well, mostly perfectly because it opens that way. Okay, need to pick this up. And rotate it around and so it kind of clips into the top there but once again I can use the translation tool to move it back give it a little more clearance and it sits 
beautifully in the middle of this bay. This may not be the most efficient way of delivering it, but it certainly looks incredibly classy compared to some of the other janky ways that we have delivered rovers to, to uh, moons and targets in the past. So I'm going to attach a 2.5 meter heat shield on this. I want this to be usable on EVE as well. Now on top we're going to have a static science package, right? This was stuff that is heavy, it's one use, it's going to land on the surface and not need to go to other biomes. We put a probe up there. We are going to have some sort of thrusters on this because the landing will be quite heavy regardless. We're going to have parachutes and I'm going to use three-way symmetry I believe on these. There we go. Because... We're going to add the goo experiments here, and we need three of those. Because this is descending into the atmosphere, so we'll have upper atmosphere, lower atmosphere, and surface science. So we need at least three goo canisters. I could put in three of those materials bay experiments, but that's just... Uh, that just starts to make the thing look ugly and big and tall. I want this thing to be stable uh, during re-entry. Okay, so we've got those. We now need some of these engines. So these engines will perform final like cushioning of the descent. So those those are RCS engines. They attach radially on the side unlike the other engines you've seen so far. And the fuel they use is RCS fuel, right? Remember we were using RCS fuel to help ourselves dock in the previous episode. Well, now, now, as you go further into the game, you get engines which entirely run off this stuff. We're going to get just over 1G, or just under 1G of acceleration, but on Duna, we have a thrust to weight ratio of 3.27 to 1, so therefore we are more than capable of actually landing this without the parachutes. Parachutes, however, will make it a whole lot easier. I think that's almost here, I guess. So okay, so we're going down through the atmosphere, we're going to collect data as we're going down. We probably want to transmit it uh, at some point, so we'll put a tr uh, an antenna on there. And it might actually make sense to have e an extra set of science experiments on top, just in case we don't have enough power to transmit. Don't need the seismometer for this. This is just the descent portion. So we're going to have the pressure, we're going to have the temperature, and we're going to have air magic sampling thingy, whatever that is. I don't know where we're going to put it because it's really going to be quite, quite big. I guess I'll do it doesn't really matter. I suspect this is massless, right? Or it's physicsless, which means the mass is just transferred to the parent body. Ah, that kind of looks cool. Maybe not. I'll move this on there. Nice. Look, that looks like a real science mission, doesn't it? Two and a half meter spacecraft, little garage underneath for a rover, which will, of course, be able to wander around the biomes and investigate all sorts of fascinating science-y type things. And then we have a heat shield to defend it from the rigors of re-entry. Oh, and I just realized that I have installed Kerbal Engineer. If you looked at my my uh, episode where I essentially covered how to calculate delta V, I mentioned Kerbal Engineer. I thought I'd explicitly bring it in just so you could see what this thing is capable of. We need about five kilometers per second to get to Duna at six if we're going to be extra safe. I'm going to add some fins to this because I kind of want the thing to be more... I think I want to make sure the thing is neutrally stable. We don't want to have the thing flip around upside down because uh, of you know, aerodynamics. So we're going to put three of these little fins on. That should make sure the whole thing just uh, stays pointed heat shield first when it hits the atmosphere. Now, of course, we need to put this whole thing on top of a rocket and inside a nice aerodynamic little air shell. Oh, there we go. There's the... So we need a stack decoupler here in front of this. And I'm, you can't... You, I could just put a thing in here, but what I'm going to do is have some extra space experiments here. So, again, a trio of these little goo experiments, one of the materials bay, and some solar panels. Yeah, let's stick solar panels on that. And then underneath this whole thing, and let's move this up, I'm going to basically extrude the fairing from under this. So 
I put the fairing, or started the fairing underneath this. This is one 1.25 meter fairing, but you can go more than twice the width, you see, just by clicking it and extruding it, right? So you, once you add a fairing to the design, you click, and my only problem here is that I have moved the whole spacecraft too close to the top of the, the vehicle assembly building, and it won't let me move up past it. There we go. So I'm just clicking this with my left button. Only when the text is green on the place cross section can you actually place it. So there's our fairing. There's our spacecraft. This whole thing will hopefully, hopefully be able to get to Duna. No, 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 no. We've got our staging. Our staging looks pretty good. We're going to deploy the engines before the, the the parachutes because we may need to actually slow the spacecraft down so that the parachutes can safely deploy. Duna's atmosphere is very thin and it's very easy for you to lose parachutes. Now, we have the, this thing tapering down to 1.25 meters. I want the thing to kind of taper back out, right, so that we have a smooth transition. This may not look too aerodynamic, but it's more aerodynamic than having a literal step in the cross section. No, I don't want those. I'm gonna have like two and a half meter uh, fuel tanks here. Now, I'm gonna put one of the little poodle engines there. And now we get 2.188. So if we get this thing into low carbon orbit, it will be capable of going all the way to Duna and performing the descent on its own. Just put the struts in there. The struts can safely pass through the the fairing with no problem at all, so don't be afraid to do that. Now we're gonna build a booster. It needs at least three and a half kilometers per second of delta V to get this thing into low curb in orbit. I'm gonna use the uh, liquid fuel booster here to do that. A little Rockamax, and where is it? Nope, nope. Nope, it engines, of course. The LFB liquid fuel booster. And that is 3.35. Okay, so I think we might need to have a little more fuel on this just to make sure the thing can uh, achieve orbit. Uh, why am I going the wrong way? There's Rockamax. I think, I think I can get away with this one. Let me just see. 3.345. No, I think I'm going to have to be a little bigger than that. Let's take this off. Stick that there, and the bigger one. Okay, 3.4, it oh, doesn't really buy me that much. I, I'm i pretty sure I can get into orbit with this. So we're gonna put fins on the bottom because having that big empty fairing at the top will make the whole thing a little, uh, a little high drag at the front, relatively speaking. Or the, the drag to mass ratio will be higher at the front. Let's get these things lined up, that should give us some level of stability and then for stability on the launch pad we will use these make sure everything's in the same stage and uh, yeah a little bit of editing here because I forgot to add a reaction wheel in line this is really important for letting us turn and of course by changing the length I've managed to break my struts so got to pick these things up and duplicate them all and drag them and attach them to the heat shield okay now, one thing that I haven't covered in any previous episode is action groups. Now, action groups let you bind custom actions to specific uh, parts. You click on this little hammer and, uh, you know, wrench icon at the top, and then you find your part. Now, they, are only, they only get action groups once you've unlocked or upgraded the vehicle assembly building to, the, like, the second level at least. Now, what I do, do is I click on the, uh, the item, and then I select an action group to associate it with. I'm going to associate this with lights, because I don't have any light on this spacecraft, so I can just associate that with toggle panels, and then when I turn on the lights, the spacecraft will in fact open up its solar panels, and I won't need to right-click on these things. If you fully upgrade the vehicle assembly building or the space plane hangar, you get another 10 action groups, which uh, can you know, obviously really make the difference when you're trying to do these things very, very quickly. Anyway, we're going to launch this thing in the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.